Thank you. I'm a very emotional person. When I when I cry, it's because I feel the beauty of source. I can't help it. Never apologize. <laughs> Never apologize. That's, well, when I cry, it's just giving you permission to cry too. Okay. <laughs> Especially for men. We're all talking. Hey, don't ever cry. <laughs> you look weak. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to be back here in Cottonwood, Arizona, after my whirlwind tour of Nashville and Georgia last weekend. <laughs> Woo! You know, I, I go out there as a single, but it's like I have to take a full band with me with two big suitcases and a carry-on and the fiddle and the flutes and everything. Well, it's good to be back. <laughs> also, it's good to be here on this Sunday, which is the start of that four-week series of The Spiritual Warrior. Because at the end of the four-week series, all those who are ready to join the movement of the holistic worldview are going to be invited to become members of the Center of Universal Light and step forward as a spiritual warrior and receive your eagle feather. <laughs> Today, I'll be talking about the spiritual warrior of the yellow feather. This is a young warrior, a man or a woman, who is wanting to be the hero in their head. The one who wants to do great things for the people. The one who wants to be recognized admired and spoken highly of by their peers and by the whole village. This is the person who is idealistic and willing to opt to die for something greater than themselves. The yellow feather is not a coward because of the color yellow, but the color yellow indicates that this spirit warrior is young, naive, and in the spring of their life with lots of energy. Remember those days? <laughs> That's what Red Bull's for, isn't it? Remember those days? The warrior's specialty is forceful interaction, especially to those who oppose or threaten. He is one who is willing to leave the hiding place of ambush and race across towards the enemy out in the open prairie, proving his bravery while at the same time wasting his own life with sudden death. But to him, it is a good day to die. Hokahe! It's the job of the Akasita Warrior Society, or the red or black feather spirit warriors, to hold back the young yellow feather so he does not spoil the surprise and give away the ambush plan, causing unnecessary deaths to his fellow fighters. He or she is a warrior who wants to set an example and lead and inspire others, but the young yellow feather has no discipline and is impatient, always wanting to act without considering the ramifications of his or her actions to the whole tribe, the whole village. And in a tribal society, your first obligation is to the tribe, the people. The point here is that no matter where we are, on our level, on the learning curve of the spiritual warriordom, we all continue to learn, or we wouldn't be here. So, to become a warrior, we want to be, to become the warrior we want to be, we start in the East, with our own resurrection to a new vision, a new dream. The definition of a warrior that I like to quote is the one where a warrior is a person who faces adversity and danger and goes ahead in spite of that without regard to his or her own personal safety for the health, benefit, and welfare of others. In other words, a person that serves the people in times of peace as well as times of war. You don't have to carry a weapon to be a warrior. Anyone here 
can be a warrior if you're willing to serve the village. Today, your village can be as small as your family. It could be your job, your church, your organization, your hobby. You decide what assets you have that can be of service to your village. And you give your gift unconditionally, with unconditional love. Are you a spirit warrior? I believe you are. And the universe knows you are. Why? Because the world, what the world needs most of all right now is a new breed of spiritual warriors to step up, step out, to step into the holistic worldview. This means that we can truly change our reality here on planet Earth by having the courage to change ourselves. Remember John, uh, Jeff Foxworthy's uh, skit about uh, the redneck? If you've got a car sitting up on cement blocks in the front yard, you might be a redneck. <laughs> if you're working on yourself to improve your behavior by practicing a discipline to improve your body, mind, and soul connection, then you might be a spiritual warrior. <laughs> If you dedicate yourself to keeping the four agreements of Don Miguel Ruiz, yes. then you might be a spiritual warrior. Mm -hmm. Remember, those are keep your word impeccable. Don't take anything personal. Don't assume anything. And always do your best. If you have the ability to remain calm during criticism, rejection, <coughs> judgment, or verbal attack, and show compassion to others who are hurting, and may be attacking you out of fear and mistrust, then you might be a spiritual warrior. If you say what you mean and do what you say, you can be trusted to apply this integrity at all times and in all situations, then you might be a spiritual warrior. If you live life fearlessly, believing that everything always works out for your best and highest good, then you might be a spiritual warrior. If you balance your life through the maintenance of the four pillars of balance, then you might be a spiritual warrior. Those four pillars are pure work, pure study, pure play, and pure relaxation. If you do healing work on yourself, like letting go of the past, like doing inner child work and healing, like facing your fears and issues and overcoming them, conquering them, then you might be a spiritual warrior. If you master love, you might be a spiritual warrior. If you master a skill of some kind to do something great with it and receive a gift for that and share that gift with the people, then you might be a spiritual warrior. If you have come into your personal power and use it wisely for your benefit and that of others, then you might be a spiritual warrior. So are you ready to become one of the new spiritual warriors? Remember the words of Dan Millman. Remember Dan Millman? I have no idea who he is. But he has a good quote. You're not here to fit in. You're here to lead by example. Oh, is that what it is? From the Peaceful Warrior? I'm learning more all the time. He was an Olympian athlete. What else do we know about Dan Millman? It's a great, I gotta get the book, read the whole book. I just love the quote, so I put it in there. Your book was made into a film, Nick Nolte's in it. The Peaceful Warrior. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a film called The Peaceful Warrior with Nick Nolte also, so. Dang. Gotta come over and watch it here, guys. I'll bring the pop for it. <laughs> so, what is a spiritual warrior? My definition of a spiritual warrior, I'm sorry. Your assignment for next week is to go out and watch that movie. <laughs> We're all going all to Joe's house. Yeah. What's that kid? We're all going to Joe's house. All right. <laughs> good for you, Joe. <laughs> My definition of a spiritual warrior is one who trains physically, mentally, and emotionally to learn and achieve a skill that they can use to accomplish something great with. Then they are given a gift and ability to help others or share with others to use for their benefit and that of others. 
They move their lives from one based on self-preservation to one based on self-service, self-sacrifice. They have suffered pain. They've had to go through personal sacrifice, ordeals, and hand hardships in order to receive this gift. And now they've chosen the path of service to the earth and to all life on the planet. It's been said that victory and defeat are a matter of spirit more than of body. One is never defeated as long as his spirit is not defeated or broken. We are a human population now living in the age of Aquarius, the astrological new Aquarian age. It is referred to as the age of self-mastery. A spiritual warrior is someone who masters him or herself and overcomes personal desire, moral issues, and all weakness in character. In general, a spiritual warrior is someone who embraces a journey of self-discovery in order to benefit others as well as enlighten him or herself. Some martial arts traditions maintain a system of ethics and honor and pursue a path of self-mastery, while others emphasize combat, competition, and fighting. But being a fighter does not make one a spiritual warrior. Some military organizations have creeds of honor and service as the, their core guiding principles. But in the fog of actual warfare, these can become lost, ignored, and even forgotten. Being a soldier does not make one a spiritual warrior. <clears throat> being a spiritual warrior has nothing to do with physical battle, making war, fighting, or being mean and tough. The battle of a spiritual warrior is in the mastery of oneself. Being a spiritual warrior means a lifetime commitment. It means the embrace of discipline, study, and long intense training, sometimes at the sacrifice of comfort and convenience. Being a spiritual warrior also means understanding your principles and not compromising them, which is easier said than done. As Dan Millian said once again, a warrior does not give up what he loves, he finds the love in what he does. Isn't that beautiful? Does he say that in the movie? <laughs> i got to see that movie. Like I said before, anyone can become a spiritual warrior, even a musician like myself. My life reflects the path of a spiritual warrior. It all starts with a desire. A little kid. I want to do something great. I want to be recognized, admired, and spoken highly of by my friends and the whole town. My older brother played the accordion. He was very charismatic and charming. My older sister was playing concert piano. Even my younger brother was playing the piano. So I wanted to play something. I told my mom, I want to play the trumpet. Of course, she said, said before, she said, oh, we have a violin under the bed. You either play that or you don't play anything. <laughs> <laughs> what mafia did she belong to? <laughs> it was an offer I couldn't refuse, of course, because I wanted to be recognized, admired, and spoken highly of by my parents, by mom and dad. Then you have to have a dream, a vision. That was when I became a teenager. I wanted to become a professional violinist and play music, which leads to the quote, I'm going to do this or I'm going to die trying. I was idealistic and willing to die for something that was greater than myself. Then working on myself to improve my personal behavior by practicing with discipline, determination, and dedication, by spending many hours, many days, many years developing a skill I needed to become great at what I would do. In the book, Talent is Overrated, it says that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to become a concert violinist. Okay, you can break that down. It's only 416 years. <laughs> no, that can't be right. <laughs> It's only 416 24-hour days. 
But you got to sleep sometimes, so let's subtract out of that. Maybe I could get four hours a day in. But if I'm working or going to school, that could even be hard, four hours a day. That's actually 2,500 days. But since you have to take some days off, I mean, you can't do the seven days a week. You burn out. So if you just practice four hours a day, five days a week, that breaks it down to 20 hours a week. But that's still 500 weeks. That's 9.6 years to reach 10,000 hours of practice. Sacrificing much along the way. Personal relationships, family. Following the path where the music led me. Living on the road, fighting. Fighting my own demons of self-hate, unworthiness. Being the lone wolf, which gave me more autonomy and independence. But also, I needed to be flexible and adaptable like the coyote. Able to act independently, as well as being a team player. Facing difficulty, pain, discomfort, discouragement, fear, and the prospect of failure and utter doom without quitting. Remember last week, the 15-year-old recital, which ended in complete humiliation and embarrassment for me. But I didn't give up. I licked my wounds. It went on. And then finding the gift, the gift in music, and then taking that to the people, serving the people with that, and becoming another one who lives through self-sacrifice. The term spiritual warrior is used in Tibetan Buddhism for one who combats the universal enemy, self-ignorance. That is defined as ignorance of the identity of oneself with Brahman, God, resulting in imprisonment within the cycle of birth and death. I guess that means you never get off this planet. <laughs> to a Buddhist, a spiritual warrior is a heroic being with a brave mind and ethical impulse, different from other paths which focus on individual salvation. The spiritual warrior's only practice is that which compassionately helps other people find wisdom. This is the ideal, the Buddha in waiting. The spiritual warrior, he resolves to attain Buddhahood to liberate others. I was having, uh, Kim and I were having dinner last night with a Jewish rabbi. We got on the subject of the Dalai Lama, who he's met. And he said, the Dalai Lama said that uh, we don't want more people to convert to Buddhism. We want more Buddhas. <laughs> well, here at the Center of Universal Light, we say the same thing. We don't want more people to convert to Christianity. We want more Christ. We want more people walking in Christ consciousness. So the Buddhist definition of a spiritual warrior is the same as my definition in that by sharing the gifts we've been given, we are being the example for others that they can achieve the same in their lives. Attain Buddhahood in order to help others become who they were meant to be. In Hinduism, the I am is the state of Brahman, the mind of God, and Brahman, which is supreme self, that inner experience of, of I am indeed none other than Brahman means the same thing as I am the Christ that dwells within. So a spiritual warrior is a person who battles with the universal enemy, self-ignorance, the ultimate source of suffering. In other words, we bring about our own suffering by not loving ourselves. This philosophy is shared by the religious faiths of India 
mainly Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, and Sikhism, that follow the rules of Dharma. In these religions, the term spiritual warrior is applied in religious and metaphysical writings where the spirit warrior is described as an archetype character on a journey of self-discovery. An archetype is a recurrent symbol or motif in literature, art, mythology that shows up around the world and means the same thing. So the theme of a universal enemy is ourselves, our own self-ignorance, our inability to see our own divinity and that of the sacredness of all life. It is found in every culture around the world. We are all on our own journey of self-discovery. And as Liam Neeson said in the movie Kingdom of Heaven, who's seen that one? Oh, yeah. Good. Good movie. It's a cool movie. It's not what you think it's about. I'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> Liam Neeson says it in one sentence. He's uh, on his deathbed. And he's speaking to his son, who's played by Orlando Bloom. He says, quote, When at the end of the world, it's not what you were born with that matters, but what you have within you to become. That's important. I cannot say that without getting choked up. <laughs> Sorry. It's just the way it is. Some of us battle the enemy without... But we all battle the enemy within. Our own self-doubt. Our own worthiness. Move to the center of universal light. Move to the love that is who you are. What you were meant to be. That is my message today. Thank you. I tried different combinations of fingering. I got a melody, a beautiful melody. And then I listened to this melody, and I just thought, wow, this is a story about a warrior. This is a story about an aging warrior, in fact. This man is so old, he cannot serve his people any longer. I think we all would lament that, and that's the name of this, the warrior's lament. But he sits in his rocking chair, and he rocks, and he remembers back. And listen for that moment when he remembers back, when he was young and strong and able to count coup among his enemies. 